Hello everyone. In this video, we will go through 20 sample questions and answer them in detail to help you prepare for the PL900 Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals exam. In case if you like to purchase the entire set of practice questions, use the link in the description below. Also check out my YouTube channel. I have already covered the sample exam questions for other Microsoft certifications and in case if you don't find them for any particular Microsoft certification, please leave a comment and I will create a video on that. So let's get started. What are the three Power Platform key actions on data that help users to drive their business? Well, Power Platform is composed of the following four key products. Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI and Power Virtual Agents. Using these products, Power Platform enables us to do three key actions on data that help them to drive business like gaining insights from data with Power BI, which is the action Analyze, drive intelligent business processes via Power Apps, which is the action Act, and automate business processes with Power Automate, which is the action Automate. So options A, C and E are the right choices. All other options are not valid actions that you can relate to the Power Platform. Power Virtual Agents help you to create powerful chatbots without the need for a data scientist. It is not relevant to any of the actions mentioned here. What are the two types of objects that the Power Platform connectors provide? A connector is a wrapper around APIs that gives access to the services data or actions like Salesforce, Office 365, Dropbox and others. A connector may provide tables of data or actions. Some connectors provide only tables whereas some others provide only actions and some provide both. So options B and E are the right answers. Select all the Azure services that Power Platform consumes. All four products of the Power Platform consume one Azure service or the other. For example, Power Apps use Azure API management and Azure functions. Power BI connects to Azure analysis services for accessing semantic data models in the cloud. You can expose a logic app as a custom connector in Power Automate and use it in your workflows. You can extend the functionality of Power Virtual Agents with Azure Bot Service. And you can use the APIs of different cognitive services in Power Apps. So options B, D and E are some of the Azure services that the Power Platform consumes. Option A is incorrect because Azure Advisor is an Azure service which guides you to implement the best practices in Azure deployments. Option C is incorrect because Azure Monitor is a service for monitoring Azure and on-premises environments. Option F is incorrect because Azure Security Center is a unified security management system for Azure and other data center operations. These three services are specifically for Azure. Power Platform doesn't consume them in any way. You need to create three Microsoft Dataverse databases. Can you create all of them in the Power Platform development environment? Well, an environment is a space to store, manage and share your organization's business data, apps and flows. Each environment is created under an Azure Active Directory tenant and its resources can only be accessed by users within that tenant. And every environment can have either zero or one Microsoft Dataverse database which provides storage for your apps. So you cannot create all three Dataverse databases in a single environment. Option B is the right answer. You are trying to explain the benefits of Dataverse business rules to your manager. He asked you about an application of the business rules to the Power Apps form. Can a Canvas app show or hide form fields based on a business rule? 
Well, business rules help you to apply and maintain business logic at the data layer instead of the app layer. Although these rules can set or clear values in either the Canvas app or the model-driven apps, they can only be used by model-driven apps to show, hide, enable or disable fields. So no, a Canvas app cannot show or hide form fields based on a business rule. You explain the benefits of the Dataverse, common data service connectors, triggers and actions to your manager. He asks you what type of triggers you can use for your Power Automate solution working with Dynamics 365. Please select all triggers that you can use in your organization's process flow. The flows you create can trigger when a Dataverse record is created, updated or deleted. So options A, C and E are the right choices. Please select all the AI models that are not included in the Power Platform. For the apps that you develop with Power Apps, you can easily unlock the power of Azure Machine Learning and Cognitive Services without writing a single line of code or creating complex machine learning models with easily available ready-to-use models like prediction models, form processor, object detector and text classification. So only the Azure Cognitive Services like Image Classification and Anomaly Detection are not part of the Power Platform. You are editing a BI report with Drill Down Visualization. You want to remove all filters and some new ones. Please select all filters that you can delete from the report. There are two main types of filters in Power BI, Automatic Filters and Manual Filters. Automatic filters are the ones that get automatically added to the visual filter pane when you try to build a new visual. So these filters cannot be deleted from the report unless you delete the visual itself. Manual filters are the filters that you can drag and drop anywhere in the new filter pane. So these filters can be deleted from the report without deleting the visual. So option A is one of the right answers. And from our argument, option B is incorrect. URL filters are just created by appending the query string parameter to the report URL in this format. So to filter the report for the territory North Carolina, which is present within the store table, you would use this query string parameter and the report would be automatically filtered. So URL filters can still be deleted from the report by getting rid of those query string parameters. So option C is correct. A drill down filter too gets automatically added to the filter pane when you use the drill down functionality for a visual in your report. Users cannot delete them so option D is incorrect. And finally pass through filters are created through Q&A. You can delete these filters, so option E is another right choice. You are creating a BI report and need to aggregate category or text fields. Please select all the aggregation options that you can use for this procedure. Well, mathematical operations like sum, average, maximum and count that combine your data is called aggregation. And you would be surprised to know that Power BI offers aggregation not only for numerical data but also for the text data. To see this in action, let's create a visual and add any text field. Power BI recognizes that this is a text field and sets the aggregate option to do not summarize. But you can change the aggregation type to any of the four remaining options like first, last, count and count distinct. So these four are the aggregation options for the text field. We have count, last and first in the answer choices and they are the right ones. The other options are for aggregating the numerical data. You are creating your first dashboard. You need to use a calculated column in one of your reports. Your manager suggested using the Power BI service for this report. Will you follow his advice? 
Well, Power BI Desktop and Power BI Service are two different services, each with a different use case. Report designers work on Power BI Desktop to develop data models and create reports based on those models. But in Power BI Service, modeling capabilities like creating calculated columns and measures are limited. Power BI Service is used mainly to collaborate and distribute the reports. Creating calculated columns is best achieved by using Power BI Desktop within the data section. Whereas in Power BI Service, you can do some light report editing and play with the visuals, but you cannot do any advanced modeling. So don't follow your manager's advice. Many a time it works too. Your manager told you to help the sales department. They want to have a responsive power app that would work on phones and tablets for salespeople on the road. What type of app would you create? Right away, options B, D and E are incorrect because they are not one of the types of power apps. And there are different types of power apps that you can create for different scenarios. They are canvas apps, model driven apps and portals. For canvas apps, you start by choosing the screen size, either tablet or mobile. So it is not something that can be used on any form factor. On the other hand, for model driven apps, you do not have to worry about choosing the app size, which means it is responsive and works on either mobile or tablet. Model driven apps is the right answer to the question. Finally, the last type of power apps, which is portal, is great for building websites. You are editing a canvas app that contains images and text. You need to add a layout control to the new page. What option on the insert tab of Power App Studio will you choose? While creating a canvas app on the insert tab, you have several controls to build your app. But gallery is the one that provides different options to add a new layout control to your app. So option C is the right answer. Forms show details about your data and let you create and edit records. Media controls let you add background images and other objects like a camera button, a barcode reader and more. Charts let you add different kinds of charts so that users can perform instant analysis on the go. You are creating a model driven app. Select all entity assets that you can use for building the app. The Power Apps Designer has two main component areas. They are artifacts and entity assets. So all entity assets seen here like forms, views, charts and dashboard will be the right answer to the question. Entities and business process flow are part of artifacts. You are developing a power app for the sales department. They ask you to add a button to email a proposal to a client. What type of flow will you create for this functionality? Well, Power Automate provides five different types of flows. Automated, Instant, Scheduled, Desktop and Business Process Flows. Automated flow is triggered by an event like when an email comes from your manager. Instant flow type is triggered manually like when you push a button and this seems to be the most appropriate answer but still we will go over the remaining ones. Schedule flow is triggered on a schedule like sending a report every working day at 8 am. Desktop flow type automates processes on your desktop or on the web and business process flow guides users step by step through the processes defined in your organization. The accountant department asked you to create a power app for expense report submission. This app should scan receipts and create a report. Then the user submits this report to the manager. After the manager's approval, the report will be forwarded to the department. What power automate flow would you create for this app? After a user creates and submits a report to his or her manager, it will trigger an approval flow. Manager reviews and decides to either approve or to reject. Based on approval results, the report will be routed to the department or back to the user. 
This routing is an example of approval flow. So option C is the right answer. How many stages you can create in a business process flow? Business process flows help ensure that your employees handle data consistently and follow the same steps every time they work with a customer. For example, requiring that people get approval for an invoice before submitting an order. Each such process can have up to 30 stages. What are the two main parts of any power automate flow? Every power automate flow has two main parts, a trigger and one or more actions. A trigger is the starting action for the flow, like a new item being added to a SharePoint list. And actions are what you want to happen when a trigger is invoked, like sending an email after the item is added to the SharePoint list. So option C and E are the right answers. Options A and F are incorrect because loop and expressions are some of the types of actions available. Options B and D are incorrect as business process and schedule are some of the types of flows. You are trying to explain the benefits of Power Virtual Agents to your manager. How can Power Virtual Agents help your organization? Please select all that apply. Well, Power Virtual Agents empower teams to easily build powerful chatbots without the need for data scientists. And they provide three core benefits. You can empower your teams so they can build chatbots without the need for any coding or AI expertise. You reduce cost by automating common inquiries so humans can deal with more complex issues. You improve customer satisfaction by allowing customers to resolve issues quickly using rich bot conversations. So options A, C and E are the right answers. What are two topic groups automatically added when you create a chatbot using Power Virtual Agents? Well, topics are discrete conversation parts used within a chatbot so users can have natural conversations with it. And when you create a chatbot, a number of topics are automatically created for you, organized under two groups known as user topics and system topics. You can modify topics within these groups but you cannot delete them. Options B and D are the right answers. Options A, C and F are incorrect because greeting, escalate and thank you are topics from the system group. Option E is incorrect because lessons are pre-populated topics part of the user group. You want to add actions to your Power Virtual Agents chatbot by calling Power Automate Flow. Can you achieve your goal if the flow is in another dataverse which is also called as common data service environment than your chatbot. You can use Power Automate flow for your chatbot actions only if the flow and the chatbot are in the same dataverse environment. So you cannot achieve this goal. Once you are done, submit the test and you can verify your performance from the result. Also, you get the performance report domain-wise, so you can analyze the questions for any particular domain and you will see all the questions related to that domain, their correct answers and explanations for each question and also links to the Microsoft documentation in case you like to learn the concept in depth. So, if you are preparing for the PL900 Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals exam, Check the description for the link to the entire practice test that cover the length and breadth of all the objectives in the exam. Also check out my YouTube channel. I have already covered the sample exam questions for other Microsoft certifications and in case if you don't find them for any Microsoft certification, please leave a comment. I will create a video on that. Thank you.